In Fujian province on the southeast coast of China, there is Putian, a city of 2.87 million people that is the cradle of China's rich. There are countless millionaires and billionaires who have originated from here, and many have made it into the Hurin Global Rich List. They own more than 10,000 pharmaceutical-related enterprises in the country, and once controlled 80% of China's private hospitals. They produce fake shoes of many famous brands such as Adidas and Nike, which can be confused with the real ones and are sold at home and abroad. So Putian City is jokingly called the capital of fake shoes. There are reports that they contracted 90% of China's temples and more than 80% of China's timber industry. There are also rumors that they operate gas stations all over China, and so on. It may seem that these people are all business wizards, but investigations have revealed that the process of accumulating wealth in many of their industries is accompanied by two words, fake and fraud. This seemingly successful but much criticized Putian business empire, what is the story behind it? Today we will talk about Putian system hospitals, and later we will tell you about other industries they are involved in. We welcome you to subscribe to our channel so you won't miss our exciting programs. The private hospitals run by Putian people are called Putian system hospitals by the Chinese. In fact, most of these Putian hospitals come from the town of Dongzhuang in Putian. The town has a total population of 110,000 people, 70,000 of whom are involved in medical-related industries, either running hospitals, producing drugs, or making medical devices. But behind the success is false advertising, excessive medical prescriptions, aggressive marketing, and other unconventional practices, so Putian hospitals have a poor reputation in the industry. However, they have grown bigger and bigger, starting as a nobody and now having a number of companies listed in the Hong Kong stock market. They operate a medical industry with an annual revenue of more than 320 billion RMB, a scale that exceeds even the GDP of the entire province of Tibet. In 2014, a worldwide group of Putian entrepreneurs in the medical industry initiated the establishment of the Putian China Health Industry Association, with former Chinese Minister of Education Chen Zhili as its general advisor, and former Vice Minister of the Ministry of Health of China and President of the China Medical Doctors Association Yin Da Kui as its senior advisor. How did they achieve such a scale, and how did they get the favor of officials? Let's take a look at the history of the growth of the medical Putian system. 1. Traveling Doctors Putian medical industry began with an old man named Chen De Liang, who is the leader of the Putian system, and is also the lifetime president of the Putian China Health Industry Association. Chen De Liang was born in 1950 and is a native of Dongzhuang town in Putian city. At the age of 26, he learned the art of selling ointments after three years of traveling around China with his master, who performed tricks and sold pain-easing ointments. Soon after, Chen acquired a recipe for a skin disease that had a curative effect on a skin condition called scabies that the locals often suffered from. He began to post small advertisements on the utility poles to sell the medicine, and soon there was a steady stream of patients, and his reputation grew. The prescription costed less than 20 cents, but each bottle sold for a couple of dollars. Chen made a net profit of three to four hundred dollars a day, which was a very large sum of money in the 1980s. He soon became the first person to get rich from selling medicine in Dongzhuang town. After Chen De Liang became rich, many friends and relatives paid homage to him as a teacher. Chen received a total of eight disciples. They later became the famous Putian system tycoons. Four of the more successful ones became known as the Putian System Four Families. After that, the so-called Chen family began to embark on the road to expansion. In a few years, they expanded all over China. In each city, they rented rooms in hotels near train stations, and then collectively posted small advertisements on utility poles or walls. In addition to scabies, they sometimes encountered patients with other skin diseases, and even venereal diseases who came to seek treatment. Chen didn't want to miss a profitable opportunity, so the first thing he would do was to use an old prescription for scabies, and then send someone to a bookstore to look up the medical books 
and then went to the hospital to get the medicine according to the formula in the medical books and sell it to patients at a high price. Sometimes he even used saline or placebos to pretend to be medicine. After television became popular, they began to advertise on local television stations. The scope of practice has also expanded from skin diseases to rhinitis, rheumatism, and even venereal diseases such as gonorrhea and syphilis. And the treatments remain the same as the prescriptions in medical books. The medicine is a few cents and a few dollars a pound, but would sell to patients for tens of dollars or even hundreds of dollars a dose. The other Putian villagers were frantic to join the team, and the number of traveling doctors expanded at an alarming rate. The cure rate of patients is obvious by this kind of medical practice and even the use of fake drugs. However, by the time many patients found out they were not healed and went back to them, the Chen family had already made a lot of money and moved on to the next city. 2. Contracting Public Hospital Departments In the mid-1980s, more people were being cheated and China began to regulate and crack down on the traveling doctors, so it was not so easy for them to start their fraudulent business. It was also from 1985 that many public hospitals in China started to reform the market because of financial losses. One of Chen Deliang's disciples, Zhang Guotuan, saw the opportunity of public hospital reform and returned to Putian to register a company and start contracting public hospital departments. They still chose the old business of dermatology, venereal disease, gynecology, and other departments. Zhang Guotuan soon found another business opportunity, which was that many public hospitals could not afford to buy test equipment, so he and the hospital negotiated to finance the purchase of the test equipment. They agreed to share the cost of the testing, and the equipment would be gifted to the hospital a few years later. This is a good thing for the hospital, so the two sides quickly agreed, and such cooperation also allows Zhang Guotuan to make a lot of money. One important reason for the success of the Putian system is that once a method works, it spreads quickly. Under the stimulation of Zhang Guotuan's success, many Putian doctors bid farewell to the traveling doctor stage and started contracting hospital departments. With the credibility of the partner hospital, the penetrative advertisements, and various fraudulent techniques, the Putian system quickly rose in the country. Putian owners were very generous in giving gifts to the government and public hospital officials, and they had a dedicated staff to study how to get in someone's favor. They contract the weakest departments in public hospitals, usually buying out the right to operate them for more than 10 years, for which they offer millions or even tens of millions of dollars in contract fees. Of course, they make more money, so while creating millionaires or even billionaires in the Putian system, they also victimize countless patients. In 1998, Wang Hai, a famous Chinese investigator of counterfeit goods, was investigating a counterfeit drug case for a client when he discovered the Putian system's hidden empire in medical fraud. Wang Hai's investigation also revealed that the Putian hospitals they contracted had been using false advertising and fake medical practices, exaggerating or falsifying medical conditions for patients with minor illnesses, and extorting money from unnecessary medical treatments. In addition, the online customer service doctors of the Putian system hospitals are all people who have not received professional medical education. They use online encyclopedias as training materials and train to become doctors through self-learning. Wang Hai also visited the town of Dongzhuang, describing the wealth there and the rampant medical tourism as shocking. There are countless luxury houses in Dongzhuang, mostly four or five story single family homes. The vast majority of the houses are over 1,000 square meters and have more than 40 rooms. But people in the village say that the houses cost at most a few million dollars to build, which is a drop in the bucket for the hospital owners. The village is a different scene during New Year's Eve, when the wealthy medical professionals return to Dongzhuang with hundreds of luxury cars of various styles and drive them to each other's homes. For those who have several hospitals under their names, there are several multi-million dollar cars parked in front of the entrance. In the village, you can only see old people, women, and children, and hardly any strong laborers. Even some people who have never attended school and can barely write their own names can open more than 10 outpatient clinics. 
During the new year, hundreds of medical equipment manufacturers and pharmaceutical companies from all over the country come to Dongzhuang. The biggest exhibition of the entire medical industry is held in Beijing and Shanghai every year, as well as in Dongzhuang during Chinese New Year. Wang Hai, using the Zhang Guotuan family as a model, disclosed the shady practices to the media and reported the Zhang family's illegal practices to the health department, prompting the Ministry of Health to issue an approval at the end of that year to outlaw the traveling doctors around the country, which was a major blow to the Putian system. Wang Hai hit Zhang Guotuan hard, and in 1999, with billions of dollars of wealth, the family immigrated to Singapore. At that time, he and his family had already cooperated with hundreds of hospitals around the country, and their staff had gradually expanded to tens of thousands of people, with an annual net profit of more than 30 million RMB. In 2004, the contracted departments were included in a serious crackdown by the Ministry of Health, and many of Putian's collaborative projects were forcibly terminated as a result. Under the pressure, the Putian system has diminished, but they are not ready to give up such a good business. They have found another loophole in the regulation of the industry, which is that military or armed police hospitals are self-contained and not under the management of the Ministry of Health. So they continue to contract departments in these hospitals, still using their old ways of practicing medicine to make money. 3. Creating Private Hospitals In the midst of social and media siege, they came up with a new trick. In addition to cooperating with military and police hospitals, they started to buy public hospitals directly. A Putian family doctor, Wen Guoliang, became the first person to take this step. Wen Guoliang started at the age of 16 by posting small advertisements for sexually transmitted diseases on electricity poles. In 1999, he merged the Dingnan County People's Hospital in Jiangxi, the establishment of the country's first private hospital, setting a new stage of the transformation and upgrading of the Putian system. After that, China's attitude towards the private medical industry went from lenient to permissive to encouraging. The Putian system further seized the opportunity to transform and upgrade. Many wealthy Putian medical businessmen began to move from buying hospitals to a new stage of building their own hospitals. Zhang Guotuan, who was forced to go to Singapore by Wang Hai, also returned to his hometown as a foreign businessman during this period and once again became an important player in leading the transformation and upgrading of the Putian system. In 2001, Zhang Guotuan reorganized and established Shanghai Huaheng Investment Group, and Singapore Zhongyu Medical Group. In 2003, he spent more than 1 billion RMB to set up a large comprehensive international hospital, Zhejiang Xin'an International Hospital, under the joint approval of the Ministry of Health, the Ministry of Commerce, and the General Administration of Industry and Commerce, which looks to have become a formal institution with advanced standards. Of course, other members of the Putian system are also undergoing transformation and development at the same time, and are expanding wildly throughout the country. They have expanded from dermatology, infertility, and cosmetic surgery to women's and children's hospitals, ophthalmology, dentistry, and now large general hospitals as well. In 2014, the Putian China Health Industry Association, the largest health industry organization in China, was founded by the core Putian system of Dongzhuang people and signed strategic cooperation agreements with six financial institutions, accumulating credit of more than 160 billion RMB. According to the website of the Health Planning Commission, as of the end of October 2013, there were 24,000 hospitals in the country, of which 10,877 were privately run, and 80% of them were controlled by the Putian system. Putian system hospitals have spread to all provinces, autonomous regions, and municipalities directly under the jurisdiction of China. However, the nationwide sensation of the Wei Zexi incident in 2016 has once again brought the public attention to Putian hospitals, and they suffered another powerful blow. In April 2014, Wei Zexi, a 20-year-old college student, was found to have synovial sarcoma. This is a malignant soft tissue tumor for which there is no effective treatment and the survival rate is extremely low. 
He was recommended by a doctor at an oncology hospital in Beijing and learned through a Baidu search recommendation and a CCTV interview that the second hospital of the armed police Beijing General Force could treat the disease. Later, Wei Zexi's parents went to visit the hospital. The hospital recommended them to try the so-called tumor bioimmunotherapy, and promised that doing it three times can last twenty years. So Wei Zexi received treatment from the second hospital in Beijing. From September 2014 to the end of 2015, Wei Zexi underwent bioimmunotherapy treatment four times at the second hospital of the armed police force. Spending more than two hundred thousand RMB, the huge amount of money spent on treatment emptied the family's savings. But in the end, Wei Zexi died on April twelfth, twenty sixteen, at the age of twenty-two. 经过这一年多的治疗，我经历了常人所无法想象的巨大痛苦。我的家庭也不堪重负，但我不想死。我还有梦想。The doctor in charge of the treatment of Wei Zexi, Li Zhiliang, is the attending doctor of the Oncology Biology Center of the Second Hospital of the Armed Forces of Beijing, and has many titles and honors. He has been interviewed by CCTV and many local TV stations as a guest, and is known as an expert in oncology in China. However, a careful investigation revealed that he is a Putin doctor. Some say that Wei Zexi was cautious when seeking medical treatment. But the power and influence of the fraudsters were too strong. In the wave of public criticism, the collusion between Baidu, the armed police, and Putin hospitals has been exposed one after another. Baidu chairman and CEO Li Yanhong was later interviewed, and Baidu was required to rectify the company. The second hospital of the armed police that outsources departments to the Putin system was removed of this license, and the person in charge of the treatment was prosecuted. Although this incident has had a certain degree of impact on the development of the Putin system, it has not stopped the pace of its development. In the past, everyone in the Putin system had the same starting line, but after decades of running, its internal disparities and divisions have also become significantly visible. A part of the Putin bosses began to expand to high-end, professional, branded development, and even began to focus on public listings. But there are still many Putin hospitals remaining in the crude operational stage, relying heavily on advertising and even unscrupulous means to seek profits. Putin system has formed four major families: Chen, Zhan, Lin, and Huang. Among them, almost all of the Chinese Mary's Hospital or Mary's Maternity Hospital is controlled by the Zhan family. Most of the hospitals, beginning with Huaxia. Hua Kang and Hua Dong are controlled by the Chen family. Most of the hospitals with the names Bo Ai, Ren Ai, and Shu Guang are controlled by the Lin family. The Huang family controls the more famous Tianlun Infertility Hospital and Mary's Hospital for Women and Infants in Beijing. Four, the secret to the success of the Putian system. In summary, the secrets of Putian success are mainly the following. First, the family style management. Putian city clan system is very well developed. The Putian system implements family management, where all the administrative staff are relatives of Putian people. Most of them are not highly educated. It is said that when the Putian system selects hospital directors and management in a certain place, one of the most important abilities is whether they are bold enough to resist pressure. Good at resolving disputes between doctors and patients, and able to settle various relationships. The hospital's leading doctors are often the so-called famous doctors from overseas or the armed forces general hospital. These doctors are not poorly paid, but they have to endure strict management. And some hospitals even practice so-called closed management, requiring medical staff to live in the hospital. One of the most important requirements for the medical staff is to keep their mouth shut. Hospitals do not allow doctors to talk casually with patients and cannot reveal the true condition of patients. To put it bluntly, it is in line with their strategy to defraud patients. The second is to make full use of advertising, media publicity, and various online marketing tools. From utility poles with small advertisements to television, newspaper, and other media advertising, and now online advertising, it can be said that every step of the Putian system's success. Is dependent on a large amount of investment in advertisement.
Their publicity agencies have a very systematic and complete division of labor. Each publicity team is divided into groups according to the subject of the disease and is responsible for the publicity of that specialty. Within a team, copywriting, artwork, web production, search engine optimization all have a dedicated member, and there is a dedicated customer service and marketing department. At the same time, their advertising methods are constantly changing, from hard to soft advertising, and even self written and self acted sitcoms. Most of the Putin hospitals will advertise through the creation of websites, the content of which is mostly fake, and then combined with Baidu's bidding for promotion. The company has also cultivated a large number of professional comment spammers who are active on Sina Weibo and public commentary platforms. These spammers, together with Baidu's promotion, have become an important attractor of patients. They will arrange for specialized personnel to conduct fee based consultations on the internet, describing some simple diseases as very difficult, with the aim of emptying the patient's pockets. Of course, the cost of advertising is also very expensive. Putin Party Secretary Liang Jianyong once said Baidu's total advertising volume in 2013 was 26 billion RMB, of which Putin private hospitals contributed 12 billion RMB. Another of their marketing tools is free consultation and low cost medical examination. Especially in rural areas, they will go to the village under the guise of free medical examination to drag people to the hospital for examination, often making an illness out of nothing, describing a minor disease as a major one. Then they will threaten the patients if you don't treat it, it will turn into cancer. What follows is a variety of so called more advanced tests. Followed by several courses of treatment with Chinese and Western medicines, and even surgery, which is the most costly to patients. Thirdly, they specialize in the treatment of minor diseases. The success of the Putin system also benefits from always catering to the market's nifty positioning, summed up in one sentence specializing in the treatment of random diseases. From the beginning with skin diseases to the later venereal diseases and even infertility, cosmetic surgery, As well as the biotechnology that killed Wei Zexi, they have always found ways to open up their own market. For a long time, they have been doing what the big hospitals did not dare to do, or could not do. So there is a large market and profitable business. What these diseases have the most in common is that the treatment requirements and costs are low. The efficacy of the treatment is difficult to determine, but even if the patient is not cured, there is a low chance of death. They are also free to set their own prices, and they are all non medical and must be paid for by the patient. There is even an exploitation of human nature. For example, many patients do not want to go to a major hospital for sexually transmitted diseases. The Putin system seizes this business opportunity and even cheat to make a fortune. This gray but relatively safe area is a major reason why the Putin system is still thriving despite being problematic. Let's look at a typical Putian medical fraud case that received a lot of attention in 2018. Mr. Young, who was over 40 years old, suspected that he was suffering from an STD, looked up the condition on his cell phone, and entered his contact information at the top of a Baidu search for Zunyi Huichuan Oyak Hospital. And soon, a female customer service staff contacted him to visit the hospital, the first step into the trap. In the first step, after arriving at the hospital, Mr. Young was told by the doctor that his condition was more serious and he had to undergo examinations. In the second step, after the examination, the doctor said that he needed to perform surgery immediately, but he had to pay 5,600 RMB in advance. So Mr. Young, who had no money with him, took a taxi home to get his bank card when his wound was simply bandaged and not even sutured. The third step, after the operating table, the doctor told Mr. Young that there are other serious conditions that require additional money for a third surgery, so the car was swiped directly on the operating table. The three surgeries together costed a total of more than 18,000 RMB. The fourth step, a few months after the surgery, Oya Hospital repeatedly used authoritative experts to consult and lure Young to perform five surgeries, costing tens of thousands of RMB. After that, many deceived patients, including Mr. Young, reported the hospital. 
After investigation, it was found that this male specialized hospital established in July 2014 is a typical Putian hospital. In the nearly four years between then and May 2018, the private hospital used fictitious diseases to mislead and intimidate patients and extort patients on the operating table to victimize more than 20,000 patients, ranging from five years old to 70 years old. Making a total of 239 million RMB in illegal profits. The fourth way of success of the Putian system is to make good use of various relationships and means to buy and bribe officials. The problems of Putian hospitals are not just discovered today, as they were exposed by the official media 10 years ago, but the strong capital and background of the Putian system has grown stronger and stronger. Occupying major hospitals and even becoming the new army in the medical field. While this is certainly related to Putian's secret of success, it is also difficult to achieve success in China without a strong political support. One of the key figures is Chen Zhili, the general advisor of the Putian China House Industry Association. A native of Putian and one of the mistresses of former Communist Party leader Jiang Zemin, Chen was the Minister of Education and Party Secretary from 1998 to 2003, when she promoted the industrialization of education and disrupted China's culture and education industry. During her tenure as Minister of Education, Chen was jointly impeached several times and was strongly urged to step down. After Chen stepped down as Minister of Education in March 2003. Jiang Zemin promoted her to be a member of the State Council of the Communist Party, in charge of education, culture, and health. Under her administration, the Ministry of Health at that time, many market-oriented reforms were beneficial to Putian hospitals, some even tailor-made, and it was during this time that the development of the Putian system ushered in a golden age. All signs indicate that the once powerful Putian system is trying to use the shell listing. A strong effort to whitewash their operations. In July 2015, the largest private chain of women's hospitals in China, Putian's Hemei Medical, sponsored by Morgan Stanley and CCB International, went public in Hong Kong, marking a major turning point in Putian's whitewashing process. At present, Dinghui Investment, CCB International, Sequoia Capital, One Tong Capital, New Hope Group, Taikang Life, etc. Have all become strong investment supports of Putian hospitals. In the alliance with the capital market, the use of huge profits as an enticement to ally themselves with the media is another major treasure of the Putian system to protect itself. The Putian system has been repeatedly mentioned in the media for its disgraceful growth history, but it has managed to stay afloat and continue to grow, certainly because of its bottomless and unconventional operation methods. But when you think about it, it's the corrupt bureaucracy of the CCP that has created such a monstrous business empire.